So, nautosan na ako. <laughs> Mag-discuss daw about the uh, low noise amplifier design. So, first, let's have a quick review. What is a st single stage amplifier and how do we generally design a single stage amplifier? So, first and for foremost, uh, linear amplifier design involved use of S parameters. So we have already discussed this. S parameters or scattering parameters are given for a certain transistor and th those S parameters are given by your manufacturers. Okay, so you already have discussed about stability analysis, which uh, means that there are ways to test if the transistor or the transistor circuit is stable or not. So we have what we call the unconditional stability, meaning for any uh, load or source impedance, the transistor circuit will be stable. So we can test it. Um, we can test it as soon as possible because as soon as we have the S parameters, we can already compute for the K and delta and also we can also compute for the mu. So if the transistor circuit is not unconditionally stable, meaning it is conditionally stable only, we should plot or we should know which are the stability, uh, stability regions by plotting the stability circles. So the radius and the, the centers of those stability circles can be computed from the S parameters. So next, you already um, know how to design for the maximum gain. Uh, this just entails that your source and load are both conjugately matched. So you can already get the load and source impedances given the S parameters of the transistor. And next, uh, if you don't want to design for the maximum gain, you can design for the specified gain by uh, changing the gain of the input and output matching network to suboptimal gain than the maximum. Okay, so, but although you are already familiar on how to tests for stability and also how to design for a specific gain. So you still still don't know how to design for a certain amplifier since gain is not the only parameter for your amplifier. So what are different types of amplifier? So we can design, for example, for a bandwidth or for the harmonic distortion. So, for example, the amplifier will have a certain bandwidth and it will also have a certain harmonic distortion. But when we use only the S parameters, we can look at these parameters because S parameters are just linear parameters. So, for example, the bandwidth and harmonic distortion will be dependent not only on the S parameters of the transistor, but also the filter that you will use for your matching network. So the filter design, so as you already know this one, you can design your filters to have a certain frequency response, and then it will enable you to limit the gain of the amplifier at different frequencies. So for example, you have frequency components that you want to uh, attenuate, so you use the filter design. However, um, it's not the only consideration that we have. The bandwidth is not the only consideration because uh, it does not necessarily mean uh, if you have a filter design, then uh, it's gain, uh, you, you filter out the harmonics. It does not correspond to a linear amplifier because the performance of your uh, amplifier is dependent on the impedances that you present to the input and to the output of the transistor. So the matching network will present that necessary impedance to achieve a certain gain at a certain frequency. Okay? 
So, by inserting the filters, you can, again, limit the gain at the harmonics, but does, it does not equate to, um, non to having a linear response. But you can limit the distortion at the input side. Okay? So, other parameters that we need to consider depends on which, which type of amplifier that we are going to design. So, there are several types of amplifiers as shown here. First, we have the low noise amplifier. We, low noise meaning your amplifier contributes the lowest noise possible to your input signal. Okay? So it's usually maximized to have a high gain and a low noise figure. And it is a linear amplifier, meaning that the exact copy or the exact shape is preserved at the output of the amplifier. So we also have high power amplifier or just power amplifier. So these are usually operating in the nonlinear domain and it's, uh, it's designed to achieve a high output power corresponding to the highest output power that your transistor can achieve. And doing so, we also want to have a good efficiency with acceptable linearity. So as you may have known, the power that is produced by the amplifier is just DC power converted. So efficiency, good efficiency means that you convert your DC power into RF power efficiently. So uh, then acceptable li linearity, since you are operating the nonlinear domain, you will not, you will have distortions, and so. Uh, the power amplifier entails to have just an acceptable linearity with the best efficiency. So for a broadband amplifier, it depends on which part of the amplifier is broadband. So when you say broadband amplifier, it just means that the, that certain amplifier uh, produces that performance at an extended range of frequency. So for example, you can have a broadband low noise amplifier that just means that you have low noise figure and high gain for a certain frequency band. So it's usually designed to achieve good performance at extended bandwidth. So that's a broadband amplifier. So at high frequencies, power and gain are usually optimized for broadband amplifiers. So this is an example or a basic block diagram of a certain single stage amplifier so as you can see here you have the basic parts on of an amplifier is of course first the signals so we have an input rf signal here and your pakipasa pala yung ano problem bit so you have an input signal rf input so this is also your input port then you will have the output port So that's the basic ports of your design. So you have an input port and an output port, but you should also note that you also have DC ports. What do you mean by DC ports? Basically the one that provides your biasing. So this, this can be actually, um, this can be uh, just one output, uh, just one DC biasing voltage or you can have a DC biasing current. So it depends on what type of transistor that you are using. For a FET, as shown here, we use voltages at the input. So we provide the DC input voltage to our gate and then we also provide the DC output biasing at the drain of your transistor. Okay? So the basic components of your amplifier single stage are the following. So you have an input matching network, basically your 50 ohms or your input, uh, your source impedance will be transformed to Z, Z sub S N, the one um, the one shown here. So this is what your gate can see. So this is the impedance that the gate can see. So that's your Z sub S. 
So for the other part, the output the art the output part is transformed to a DL, which is seen by your brain by using an output machine network. Okay. So the input bias network just makes sure that the actual needed biasing in the gate is delivered. And the output bias network is, is just a DC circuit that makes sure that your uh, drain voltage is uh, correct at the drain of the system. So other, other uses of the bias network is that the DC power, uh, the DC path and the RF path should be filtered out. So for example, we do not expect to have an RF for example, you have a signal from the RF input. It does. It should not be um, flowing through the input bias network towards the VU. So it means that it filters out the, the RF signals. But you should have an input bias network or bias network that delivers the DC power. So that's the same as the output. Basically, you have an output from the transistor RF signal shouldn't be um, transferred to the DC uh, powers, at uh, DC power supply. So that's another function of the bias network. So as you can see here, we have a sub, uh, we have a subscript of N. This just means that N is the N harmonic. So for example, if your N is equal to one, that's your fundamental, Impedances, you have um, second harmonic impedances and third harmonic impedances. So for uh, linear for linear amplifiers, you don't need to know what are the second and third harmonics since you don't have those components in your voltage or in your current waveforms. Okay? But for example, if you're gonna be designing a nonlinear or an amplifier in the nonlinear region of operation, you should be able to know which are the impedances presented by your matching network at the harmonic frequencies. Okay. So this uh, harmonic impedances will uh, transform the shape of your uh, of your signal. Okay. So this this will be discussed in a later lecture about more on power amplifiers. So, but for linear circuits, we are just, um, we are just interested in the fundamental source and fundamental load impedances. So, low, let's discuss now the low noise amplifier design. So, as you can see, we, we have a subtitle, two-part noise parameters. So first, what is noise? You already have discussed about this in previous lectures, but just a review. Noise, it means uh, the unwanted, any unwanted component of the signal that arises from your components, okay? So actually, it can also arise from other sources, but that is already interference, okay? So it, it is usually random in nature due to thermodynamic considerations. So for example, we have heat and movement of electrons and then this produce the noise in your components. So being a part of the signal, so since your noise is a characteristic of your signal, uh, uh, or what we can say that your signal is a mixture of your wanted signal and noise, so what happens to your signal also happens to the noise. For example, if you attenuate the signal, you also attenuate the noise. But if you amplify the signal, you also amplify the noise. Okay, so that's that's what happened. And also, noise is also added after some components. So your component also adds noise to the signal. So noise is added when the signal is transmitted or passed through the network. So how do we characterize the noise in a signal? Basically, we have the signal-to-noise ratio or SNR of a signal. This is just equal to the signal power or, or your wanted signal power all over the noise power. So uh, a good SNR means that you have a higher value. 
So this means that you have a better quality of signal since a higher value means that either your signal is higher, has a higher power, or your noise has a low power. So how about for how do we characterize the noise in a network? So we can quantify the noise in a network by quantifying the amount of noise that is added to the input signal by the network. So how do we quantify that? We can use the following. We have the noise factor, the noise figure, and the noise temperature. So by now, you already know that the noise factor is just the ratio of the SNR from the input to the output. So you would expect that a noise factor is all, all, always greater than 1. So noise figure is same as the noise factor, but in, decimal, in decibels, but some literature or some um, professionals use both, uh, both terms interchangeably. So another, for the noise temperature, we have uh, this parameter associated to thermal noise of a network. Uh, the meaning of this is that we look at the temperature as if the component is just a resistor. Hence, you have uh, the noise equal to, the noise power equal to K times the noise temperature times the bandwidth of the signal. Okay. So now, let's look at how do we look at the noise in, a, in an amplifier. So as we can see, uh, as I've already discussed earlier, the amplifier or the signal with the noise is also amplified when you amplify. The signal with the noise is amplified, hence the noise is also amplified. So we can look at the noise figure as the SNR of the input all over the SNR of the output. So hence, the SNR of input is just SI over SI, but the SNR of the output is equal to um, the, signal of, the signal at the output, which is just G times SI, so the gain times your signal power. And then the gain of your, uh, sorry, the noise power at the output is equal to your noise input times the gain plus also the noise added by the components times the gain. So that's where the uh, expression comes from. So note that since we can use manipulation and then we'll just arrive to the noise figure being equal to 1 plus the noise added by the circuit all over the input noise. Okay. So now, how do we determine the noise parameters of a linear two-port network? So we have the function, we have here a function of the noise figure in terms of several uh, several parameters of your transistor. So as we can see here, we have the noise figure of a certain transistor is equal to F mean plus Rn over G sub D times the quantity D on minus B G squared plus B on minus B G squared. So let's look at the different parameters. First we have G sub D plus B sub G. D, B sub G, so this is just an admittance. So G sub G is the real part, B sub G is the imaginary part. So this is the admittance of your generator presented to the input of the two points. So for example, you have this two-port network, and this is your input, and this is your output. So G sub G plus B sub G is just this value. Okay, so this is just your admittance from this point. So next is the G sub on plus J B sub on. So this is the generator admittance at which the optimum noise figure occurs, wherein the optimum noise figure is just the F mean. Okay. So for example, if Y that you present here is equal to J sub on plus, I'm sorry, G sub on plus J B sub on, 
So this will have a nice figure of equal to S D. Okay. So that's the that's just the, the definition of G on G on. So that's the optimum noise figure admittance. So now what is R of N? It's just an empirical value. So you can look is you can look at it just as just a constant. So how do we now quantify the noise figure? As you can see here, when you have uh, an admittance that is far away from the optimum admittance, so from here, this value becomes large, right? So this, this value also becomes large. So that means that when you have a, uh, an admittance point that's farther than farther to your optimum point, then you'll have a higher noise figure or higher noise factor. So when you use uh, G on or B, G on to say B on, you'll, you'll have uh, zero terms here, right? So this will be zero plus zero times something is also zero, and then you'll have uh, F equal to the minimum noise So that's how you that's how you quantify the noise factor of a transistor circuit. So of course your two port network is your transistor and these values are usually given by your manufacturer. So the manufacturer of the transistor gives this value. So they do not give you the actual values but they give you the what we call the noise parameters. So these noise parameters are usually embedded in your S parameters. So some, so when you look at the definition of the dot uh, S and P file, so you have something like uh, an S a table for the S parameters, then uh, another table for the noise parameters. So of course, when you try to design a low noise amplifier, it is uh, a requirement that your transistor have your noise parameters. So if you don't have that, you won't be able to compute for the noise factor of your element. Okay? So that's the first step in choosing the transistor to use. Okay? So you make sure that the manufacturer the manufacturer gives you the nice parameters of the transistor. <clears throat> so how do we now design for a specified noise figure? Given that we have we have already characterized the noise factor, that's just the basic of designing your amplifier, right? So next is Achieving the lowest noise figure will mean that your input is matched for uh, your in input will be mismatched to the maximum gain because the, the minimum noise figure input impedance is not equal to the maximum gain impedance. Okay? So there are times that you can add some circuit to have your maximum gain closer to your noise figure, lowest noise figure impedance, but that's an advanced uh, technique that you will want to review when you actually design your LMA. So next, um, so the assumption that we will have is that we use the output conjugately match for the highest gain, okay? So we use the highest gain or maximum gain output impedance, okay? After that, we plot the noise circles with, with by using the S parameters with the noise parameters. So how do we now um, plot the noise figure circles? Uh, you just use this, uh, expression. So note that ito lang yung kanina in just another form. Okay. So assuming that 
the amplifier output is conjugately matched, we have the following uh, center and radius for your noise figure circles. Okay. So, wait lang. So, since the best noise figure impedance at the input is not equal to your conjugate matched uh, case or the one with maximum gain, we can expect to have a gain mismatch. So, how do we resolve the impedance mismatch resulting to the reflections at the input? So, this means that um, there will be reflections at your input since you're not using the maximum power transfer uh, impedance at the input. So one way is to use lossless feedback. So meaning we add we add a, a network in parallel with the input to output so that we can negate the feedback of the transistor. And by doing this, we change basically the S parameters of your transistor, which means that this has an effect to the, uh, to the impedance with the lowest noise figure. And hence, we can make the, that impedance uh, closer to your S11 conjugate or the maximum power impedance. So you're making the two points, which are different, to be closer together by using a parallel uh, network uh, in the input to output of the transistor. So by doing this, we basically resonate out any parasitic capacitance or input capacitance of the transistor by adding an, a, an inductive network. But this depends on which frequency you want to uh, make the uh, matching equal. Okay. So now let's uh, look at how we actually design a uh, low noise amplifier from scratch. So first we need to have um, a purpose why we design a low noise amplifier. So what will it be used for? So for my uh, previous student, um, what she did is to design a low noise amplifier for a uh, base station uh, receiver. So this is the scenario. So we have, for example, here we have a base station located at a base station located at a location which is connected. So this has connection. And in between those that base station and a remote base station are mountains and also sea. So if you're familiar with it, uh, this is um around Aurora. So we have another base station that's remote in this uh, part of the land. So this has no rem uh, no connection, so this is remote. Okay. So the original design of the project is that for the village base station, what we did is, or what they did is actually to sat uh, to use satellite to connect the two, so we have here a satellite connecting the two. So every data to be used uh, to be sent and received by the two base stations actually um, we pay for that, and it's quite costly. And so the second phase of the project is to actually use radios by um, having buoys. Okay, so buoys, this will contain the radio and uh, instead of using this link, so we cross mark this and we don't use it already, so we only use um, this link. So from one, uh, from the connected BTS to our one buoy and another buoy and back to the remote location. So by using this, if we actually invest in the infrastructure, this will be uh, less costly than the VSAT, which are not um, our infrastructure. So, so we expect that in this 
BTS, uh, we really need um, a receiver or a radio receiver that can um, get, still get the signal even though it passed here. Okay, so that's the that's the purpose of the low, low noise amplifier. So for the low, low noise amplifier, the following targets are used by the student for the specific application that I have already discussed a while ago. So I'll tell them one by one. So the first one is, of course, the frequency band. So we need to know which frequency do we want the amplifier to actually uh, perform. So we only use the 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz. So this is just the ISM band, 2.4 gigahertz. And since we want to have a very, um, very sensitive receiver, we targeted the noise figure to be lo lower than 1 dB. So that's good enough. And also, um, to further um, lower the noise figure of the system, we want to have a high gain. So we need a 15.5 dB, at least uh, that value for the gain. So we actually assume that our source and load are just 50 ohms. So since the source will be our antenna, so which is usually designed to have 50 ohms at 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz, and the load termination will be our radio, which is actually 50 ohms. Okay, so from this design parameters, she actually um, uh, look at which uh, transistors will actually yield this performance. She used uh, this tra specific transistor, BFP842. And she looked at, of course, the DC analysis. How does it perform in the DC domain? So first, we look at the I sub C or the collector current. And uh, with respect to your output voltage, uh, biasing or BCE. And we also look at the base current. So actually, from here, um, the data sheet tells you which... Uh, Biasing will yield a very low low noise figure, and she just get got this um, Quiescent and point M1, which is 2.5 and uh, VCE and volts, 2.5 volts, and a collector current of 0 0.005 amperes and a base current of 1.675 times 10 to the negative 5 amperes. So what? She actually used is a cascode topology. So from her related work, she identified that this is the best uh, to use. So to actually get the quiescent point for this cascode network, she designed this um, biasing network using only resistors. Okay. So from here. She can already verify from from DC simulation if the actual circuit uh, performs in the DC domain um, if it actually gets the the quiescent point. So from this figure, uh, she can already see. We can already see from this. Um, simulation that indeed she got the quiescent point and looking at these parameters which are just our mu source and mu load or the stability parameters at the input and the output we can see that it's lower than z than one and we want our low noise amplifier to at least be greater than mu greater than zero to have the possibility for it to be uh, conditionally stable and so she really need to um, insert a stability network to fix this instability issue, okay? So this is actually the design guide that she used, so using advanced design system. 
So she already designed a stability network. So this is, uh, she added these two networks. So basically adding a loss in between the input and the output. Okay, so that will quite change the S parameters of the cascode network. But look, look at this, um, she used uh, RLC. So this means that you're only, you're only getting the uh, connection of the resistor at certain frequencies in which the LC is actually resonant. And that's the, also the case for this output network. So uh, she added an LC with an R, so basically adding loss at certain frequencies. Okay. So that, that, that's the design that she made. So we can look at it as, since this is the input, she did not add any more resistive circuits because when you add resistive um, resistors in the input, you'll just uh, jeopardize or you'll just have a, a very bad or a worse noise figure since you want the input to be lossless as possible. So doing that, we can look at we can look at the mu source and mu load, and as we can see, this is one roughly. Sorry, so that should be a straight line. So roughly, it's actually uh, higher than one, and we are sure that the net that the amplifier uh, with the stability network is already uh, un unconditionally stable. Now, whatever load or source that we give or at, that we design the matching networks to match to, this will be unconditionally stable. So next, um, we actually look at uh, the S, using the S parameter. So note that the transistor S parameter should have the noise data. So without that noise data, we can only plot the gain circles, which are the blue circles here. As you can see, the noise circles are actually um, derived again from the S parameters with the noise data. And as you can see, this, uh, this is the point wherein this has the lowest noise figure, and this is the point which has the maximum gain. As we can see, it's different and to get the best trade-off between the noise figure and the gain, we can plot a connecting line between these points and we actually use uh, any points um, tracing this line so that we have the best um, we have the best trade-off. So for example, since for example we want this point, so that's already just uh, a dB away from the maximum gain, but it's really close to the lowest noise figure point. But note that if you use another point, so for example, this point, it should have the same gain, but notice that your noise figure is um, almost three steps away from the minimum noise figure. So that's just um, not getting the best trade-off. So that, hence, we really need to get or to choose a point wherein we can have the best trade-off. That's the meaning of that. Okay. So now that we already have the input point for the input matching network or the input impedance, the output impedance is basically just the maximum gain point. And so she can already design the matching network. She already did that and she used stops and transmission lines as shown here. So you can actually um, think of this, for example, the shorted stop as just a uh, inductor. <laughs> and this one is just maybe a capacitor and an inductor. It depends. Okay. So these are just 50 ohm lines. So um, that's that's what um, she used as a point. And 
And for the output matching network, this is what she did. And she got the following. But I guess uh, since okay, so that's the that's the matching network. So again, she used uh, just stops here, and you can see that we have a uh, optimum impedance for a lower noise figure as shown here. So this should be what she used or maybe just a, a trade-off of that impedance. So actually, that's it. So after designing the matching networks, you just add it to the whole network. And now we can look at the performance. It's, it's already um, a full circuit. So from this, we can see from this, uh, from this graph that your amplifier is already unconditionally stable still after adding the matching networks. However, as we can see at 2.4 gigahertz, we have a 1.487 nice figure. So I think that's in dB. So we Oh, no, that's not in dB. So I think it's not in dB. So maybe it's in dB. Okay, so but it's not quite the same as 1 dB. So we want it to be 1 dB. And this one is actually okay since we already got 15.9 and the minimum is 15.5 for the target. So from this, we still optimize the matching networks, the resistors, or stability network so that we can achieve a better performance. And that's what she did. So that's Miss Santos, by the way. And after optimizing those parameters of our circuit, we already got our, uh, our target nice figure and also a very a higher, a higher um, gain. So that's ST1. Okay. So also we can also see that the network is still stable and condition. Okay. So this is still not enough. We need to make it into an actual circuit and hence you just make the layout from this. So basically this is your layout. So that's your layout in schematic diagram but you'll also need to make it into a layout software so what she used is Altru and so you can see this is the final circuit so this circuit is quite small so this is just your input network and this is just your output machine so and then this is your this are your transistors. And this is your RF input and your RF output. Okay. So by doing this, after that, of course, she also used the equipment in the lab to verify if the simulated response is equal to the actual response. So what she got is a really higher a nice figure but that's that is really um, expected since the environment that she used to test the noise figure is not an anechoic chamber so we expect outside noise to be also added to the noise figure okay so it's not a very reliable test setup so however she still got the circuit working and that's what we really need for this project okay so that's the basic part so i hope that you learned some thing or two from this lecture so if you have any more questions you can drop your comments below and that's all thank you